All right, next up we've got uh, Alex Bidos, I think is how you say the last name. So we'll start, uh, I guess we'll start here. Howl's Moving Castle stuff. Oh, dude, cool. Some nice render here. Some nice render. Yeah, super cool. There's still a little bit of uh, geometry feel to it. It's like trying to get away from making like, um, let's see here. Getting away from this shape. Oh yeah, this is gray, isn't it? Yeah, cool. So this shape right here, like I can count the edges, you know what I mean? So it's like if you can fix that type of stuff, that's gonna go a long way for like uh, modeling out stuff, especially when it's going to be baked out. In general though, this looks really good. It looks cool. It's just very clean and organized, you know? And I, I think uh, subtly shifting some of these pipes so they have a little bit of a, a bend to them so they're not all like duplicates of each other. Uh, thinking about like how how is this piece connected instead of it just being pushed into it. Uh, are these just holes in the face, you know, or are they like, do they have an edge to them? Like a, like this, do they have a rim to them? Um, this edge is really sharp. Yeah, that's the type of stuff, like up here looks pretty good. Like l the lights wrapping around nicely. There's nice bevels. The edges have nice smooth transitions. It's like that type of uh, beveling and detail I, you would expect in here. Um, like is this, this actually looks like it was modeled separately and then just placed on the surface versus like, I think most windows are kind of like this one. They're like, they're inset. And then if this is like a, if you did like a Japanese style, maybe like it slides. And then in that case, one would be further in than the other. So they look like they could, one can overlap on top of the other. Uh, just any way you can get away from it being easy to be like, oh, oh yeah, I just did that. He just like modeled this and placed it on top. It's like if you can make them feel like they're connected, that they're actually built together, that's like really good. That's why this area here looks pretty cool. Uh, I guess in here, obviously it's a little low rest, so we can't really tell. But in here, we're missing a little bit of depth in the pieces that are allowing for ambient occlusion to really fill that space. So you're not you're losing essentially a lot of detail that is uh, looks like is modeled there, but it's not really being uh, emphasized. That and think about the thickness of things like that looks really thin and maybe it's supposed to be that thin. I don't know. I, I don't have a sense of scale as the other thing. So I'd, I guess the chains are helping a little bit. Yeah, and you can see like this is just a an inset bevel of the face, right? I think uh, putting a little bit more um, work into like separating out maybe this piece is molded and casted separately from the rest of that that strip, and then those are welded together, or like maybe this is just a trim that's on top of the the, the actual frame, and then in that case, is there bolts here, or, like? Those details really help like bind everything together. Overall though, it looks really cool. Like from, from back here, it's like, that's awesome. So I keep moving on. This looks really cool. There's a consistent um, kind of wear on this. Speed sculpt, 3.5 hours, nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's see here. I, I like the uh, presentation of this. 
the text here is a little it's it's off-putting because it doesn't really fit the style that the rest of the image feels like it has i guess the axe was sick right uh poly count wise these look a little low as well i mean maybe that's the style i just like the hard edges like if you're just going for like the let's see old project revisit some to create a more polished version to sculpt and texture I mean, I guess like this one looks smoother than this one, like the faceting here, but maybe it's just because of the side view. Oh, uh, thanks, Dustin. Yeah, it's, it's just tough though. Like uh, presentation wise, it's almost there minus like the text here needs to be maybe integrated a bit more. There's a thing uh, that you get in composition that sticks out to me with everything as well. Is like watching out for spaces like this. Like this area right here is really thin. Uh, let's, let's see if I can do this. So watching out for that space being so thin, it's like it gives a text a hard time to breathe. So like um, when you bring it down here, there's like that space is actually different here. And then... Uh, Oh man, come on. Down here, the space is the same, so that's good. But it just it's jarring that the text above is bigger than the text below. Is that is it? No, that can't be. But then, like, is this space? This is like the. This is the ADD kicking in. Like the space above is actually smaller than the. The space below is actually smaller than the space above. So like if you can see. The stuff like that, it gets me somehow. I, I don't I don't know. And maybe it's maybe you were doing it because of uh, because of this. So if we go here, the space between the top of the scope and the space between. I mean, it looks like it's close. You see that? So those spaces are very similar. I secretly do graphic design. <laughs> it's part of the uh it's part of the idea of like composition and stuff. Like composition's not only like three dimensional, right? It's it's how stuff takes up space and how how that leads the eye. Um the other thing that's that can kind of get in my in my head really easily is this one. So see how close this is to the edge. Like you need plenty of room for breathing when it comes to comes to stuff. And it looks like you're thinking about framing. You're just it's just really tight. If that makes sense. Like you have all this space here. Taking this gun and then actually moving it here and making it bigger, it allows you to actually see more of the gun while also uh, getting rid of the the side tangent. Let's see here. Let's do that. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's like, I don't know if I can do it with this side. That seems much more difficult. Or is it? What the hell? I think I can sample here. I'm just going to fudge it. Don't worry about the patterns not lining up. But like, see, having that much more room helps a ton. Oh yeah, we need this actually.
And then the for the text, it's just a matter of like getting getting this stuff here. Closer together. I'm taking a lot of time with this, I'm sorry. It's a little easier to read. Maybe like if they're going to be centered like that, maybe you take it and you put it here. I don't know where the center is. Anywho, yeah. See, and if you do that, then you're this this area right here is really tight. So you got to be careful of that. Anywho, dude, that was yeah. That's a super tangent. Sorry. Um, yeah. Guns look cool though. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Oh, this is awesome. So the the detail on the sculpt is really cool. Uh, I don't know if you ended up two hours trying to work on speed on creating assets. So working on speed is actually really good because you start you start uh, taking shortcuts that are that can be uh, really beneficial to get if you can get the same result or it looks acceptable enough. Uh, then you're you're good to go. Like the industry will tell you, make the game look awesome, right? But the industry also wants you to finish the game and ship it so that you can make your money. That's just the reality of it, right? So if you can get a game up to 80% visual fidelity, it's it's okay to ship that even though it all hurts us in our art hearts, you know? So get it up to 80%. And then you can get better at polishing it, making it look better. If you can make it look 95% quality on your end, like if you feel like you're hitting like that bar for yourself and you're doing it in shorter time and you're winning, you're winning all the things. Uh, in general, though, this looks really cool. Materials, materials look uh, interesting. Our art hearts, you like that one? Mine art hearts. Uh, this material and this one are two different materials, right? So maybe, um, pushing the roughness a little bit more, uh, reflective. You can already see it here, which is cool. I think maybe some detail in the roughness map itself will probably get that separation and, and bring you just a little bit more over the top to separate these two out. Uh, but in general, it looks, it looks pretty cool. I can still see the primitive shapes in the uh, in this piece here and with the metal pieces being so angular uh, it would be nice to see the I'm assuming this is a wooden part it would be nice to see the wooden part more rounded or have more sides to it uh, and then the only other comment I would make is this metal piece down here it looks really thin so like doubling that or getting it closer to this will bring it in line with the kind of the the style or look that you're going for with the rest of the piece. Let's see what else we got here. This one looks cool. See, I really like this one because there's much more information happening in the material. The little edge highlight stuff that's ha or the edge damage chipping stuff that's happening here looks a little too procedural just because it's picking up on all the little details. And that might just be a, a product of the fact that you you sculpted all of those little details. That's why I try and keep the sculpts really simple in my my ZBrush files. Um, maybe modeling these skulls so that they just kind of bump out a little bit would be good. And then this keyhole area, like I would just commit and model that inward with the uh, and just let the normals take care of that. If you need to build the inside, not all the little inner workings and stuff, but an actual inside that like uh, the light can bounce around in and the AO can like build up inside of. Oh, yes, the dynamic real time snow. These are cool. This is a cool uh, 
material. So I was going to say, aha, it is a video. Cool. I was like, where's the video? Nice. So if you do a dynamic snow buildup, the sculpted wood grain. Oh man, it's good. Good call, Ricky. Um, with this type of transitioning, if this is like frost buildup, that'll happen on like all sides, right? Mainly starting in the crevices because those areas get the coldest. Uh, but when it snowfall uh, during this transition, so you've got the buildup like kind of all over. Try and focus it in the crevices. And then the buildup of snow on the Y or on top first before the rest gets covered is going to be a big uh, bonus for you versus just like everything kind of getting cold and frosted all at, the, all at the same time as it transitions forward. You want the Y to come in first. And then, uh, well, you want the crevices to start getting that cold look. Then the Y to start building up the pattern. And then the rest to follow behind that to the why. Hey, uh, Pixelogic streaming right now, <laughs> just so you guys know. <laughs> I just got alerted about it. Anyways, this is cool. I like uh, seeing like um, solving a material uh, process that can be used. like this is something that you would want to have working in like the open world, right? So you could take a level and then like over time it snows and like everything kind of builds up that snow. The pattern break up in here is cool too. Stylized street assets. So my personal feeling on the brick stuff is the bricks are very like, um, it's very clean as far as how they're positioned with each other. And maybe getting some grout inside would help the material push itself a little bit further. Um, this trash can's pretty cool. I can tell that you're using alphas for the for the cuts. So like, um, I guess you want to be careful with how much you're using those, or like what materials you you're using them on, because on metal it kind of looks a little strange. Wood looks pretty interesting. The saturation there is crazy. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, that this is probably too saturated. Oh, well, Marcus, stab it. <laughs> uh, this, this is actually probably the strongest of the, of the group just because the, the details, like the, the bevel size is pretty even the, uh, the cuts that you're using at the alphas are actually, um, deforming the shapes versus just being like placed on top. It feels the saturation on it's also a little high, but that might be okay. The thing I guess I would say with this, the stylized street assets, is I think this thumbnail should show all of them. Because I am ex I was expecting to just see this until I read that. I was like, oh, there's more. Uh, this, one's, this one's pretty cool. I commented on this on another stream. Oh, man, that, that snake head's sick. That's super sick. I would use the opportunity of like differencing differences in materials to, to push this. So like the eye, but wait, there's more, but the, uh, the eye, like how it's faceted, like, I guess you're going to make that a different material. Like that would be a gem or something. Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Be careful with the uh, cracks transitioning onto the next, onto the next stone, unless I guess the fracture, like if it got hit here, then it could fracture everything. Um, just careful about them following the same direction. If the impact was here, there'd be fracturing that is kind of centralized around this. And then you'd have outliers that go in different directions, but there would be more like spider fracturing around the center here. This is cool though. It's good to see the, uh, see you approaching this, how you're approaching it with this one. You could 
you could definitely take the tiles and uh, tilt them a little bit. That way, that way they have uh, some differences in their overall normal direction. That'll really help when you're like lighting it from an angle. It'll fake a lot of the depth. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, that stuff's really cool. Ooh, and materials. Oh, man. So I feel like I'm progressing through the work, and then it just stops. Where's the... Uh... Is it in here? It is in here. Okay. These two posts should actually be together. And the shot that you're using for your Egyptian... Uh, scene is like it's overly bright it's super bloomy and it's it, you're missing out on like uh showing the the snake head and the door oh yeah see and you post it in here again like this should just be in here and then remove the work in progress yeah the this shot is not the not the strongest and the transitions between the props. It's like you need to add stuff between there, lower the bloom a lot, try and make the water not look like liquid metal. Um, try and get the sand to not look like, um, it's like really reflective right now. It's like the gloss needs to be, or the roughness needs to be way down. Like you could probably do this one. Let's see here. This is always a fun exercise is just like take your work and then make little thumbnails of it. You could do like this one or um, you could do what is going on here? Oh, I'm like, what? No. No, there was time. Oh, I see what I did. Well, now it's going to be a little lower res, but... Something like that could be interesting. Jamie, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Anyway, yeah, I would look at a better presentation for this one. And then I would definitely combine this one with this. You don't need to have double posts, especially when they're, it's weird that they're split up like this. Uh, this one's an art dump. Um, oh, wow. You did most of that in ZBrush, didn't you? That's intense. That looks painful. I mean, I guess you're using a lot of alphas and stuff too, right? So you did an art dump for that. Is it, is it in here? This is also really nice. I like that you were showing this. this is a very technical uh, mindset. I'm just digging through your your materials. Excuse me. This looks a little saturated. I think uh, you would actually, um, if you were to grab that, you probably want to do a bit more. Like that. It's it's minimal, but it's like it's the difference between like too saturated for reality and then like uh, real life saturation. You should link to the full challenge in this the submission as well. Yeah, dude, that's a great that's a great call. Yeah, like your beyond challenge link should be here, and. Uh, I don't see the challenge anywhere in your portfolio. 
I mean, if you go to challenges, we can view the submission here. Oh man, that's a whole other, it's a whole other scene to look at. Oh, my God. Anyways, your portfolio is pretty robust. Uh, you're covering a lot of stuff. I think what you need to focus on is lighting, composition, and material definition. Uh, I say lighting because you're doing a lot of posts like blooming and stuff. Uh, that's kind of over, it's over emphasizing or it's kind of overdoing the, the lighting a bit. The propping for composition, I think just getting, like don't worry about poly counts and stuff like that. Worry about making something look cool, right? So like make sure you get props around here, something happening in here. Like maybe this is maybe this is something. Maybe these are stairs that go down into the liquid. Uh, more more propping here, other props, something here, maybe a doorway. Just more happening than just the pillars and walls, right? Uh, and then the other thing is materials. Uh, I did yours. I did yours, yo. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, you need to focus on materials, um, specifically lighting materials, roughness in your materials, getting those nailed down and then composition. And with composition, I mean like, um, like this is a strong composition or it's a good angle, but like the lighting and the lack of propping is, is hurting it. And then the materials as well. Uh, Willis, I will, uh, link it to you afterwards. I got you. I'll have to upload it to YouTube unless you want to look through the VODs, but, uh, that should happen pretty quickly right after the stream. Anywho. And then this is, this is always cool. I'll link this in chat because people can see like this, is a this is a viable workflow that is used, uh, at cloud Imperium. Uh, as, as well as in other games like Unreal Tournament, like it says in here. But yeah, it's basically materials, masking by the materials, and then placing decals to uh, get the shapes instead of baking everything out. The only thing I said was uh, things like this, like this tiling piece here could be a tileable normal that has its own grunge map. And then you're just mapping that up here, you're just mapping that to this poly here uniquely. That'll give you control over tiling and all that, all that jazz. Anywho, uh, yeah, this one's cool too. I think uh, focus on lighting, materials, and your composition. Get another scene or two on your portfolio, and you're you're in a good spot. I think you'll be in a good spot. Cool. All right, I'm going to get some water and then we're going to go through the uh, Discord critiques, maybe some exercises, depending on if there's anything I can model based off of those critiques. And yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> 